uh, shoulder the hand get closed uh, similarly for the flexion of the elbow joint you need to do the flexion uh, of for his arm so as he flex his arm the strap get pulled from the inner side of the uh, prosthesis and that pulls the arm up so the he get patient get the flexion of the elbow joint and for locking of the elbow joint like after uh, making taking the position of the elbow joint he need to lock the elbow joint in that position to perform a particular task so he need to do a tricky movement like uh, shoulder rotation with uh, stretching so he does that movement and the, that locks the prosthesis in position and after then again he need to uh, stretch the strap which controls the hand to open the hand like so in case where as we can see the straps are present on the chest area so doesn't it restrict the respiratory movements no it does not because the straps are not covering uh, uh, vital part i mean maximum part of the uh, chest it is uh, only covering particular portion of our chest so and it is again mobile it's not uh, restricting the chest movement but stabilizing the prosthesis so that does not uh, uh, stop the breathing or any other function of the body so these are basically to support the prosthetics that are present yes and as we discussed earlier like uh, uh, for a patient having a very less movement in the particular section of particular residual part of the body we use different type of uh, uh, amplifier of uh, uh, movement i mean excursion because uh, when patient moves his body there is a excursion occur on the cable and that moves the uh, component but if the movement is less patient is not able to generate uh, the movement as required to open the uh, or operate the prosthesis we use a certain type of uh, amplifier which uh, increases the effectiveness of the pull which the patient is generating so like uh, in the figure uh, on uh, right upper one if you see the patient we give bar type of uh, amplifier which uh, after pulling uh, in talking about in a, in a centimeter if patient pulls in one centimeter at this point patient get uh, this double movement from the uh, double pull on the uh, functional cable so we get maximum movement from that uh, particular joint or the portion is using and in case where if there is any injury being uh, has been developed due to some impression or something doesn't that increase more risk for it if patient has a uh, injury in his residual limb it is a uh, recommended patient does not use prosthesis if that uh, that part is uh, giving any friction or any uh, pressure at that particular point because uh, if the patient is getting continuously pressure on that injured part the wound will not heal and that again there are chances of infection because of the closed environment of the socket and the residual arm so it is uh, advised to get the uh, wound heal and after that use the prosthesis and what are these internal and external mounting mounting what does it mean by that mounting of uh, mounting basically is a placement of the strap and the uh, uh, cable so how we place the cable and strap over the uh, prosthetic uh, prosthetic component is uh, important like if that should not affect the other movement of other joints or the uh, part and that uh, it, it should not be seen from outside the cloth that is important so according to that we place the uh, uh, straps and the amplifiers on the uh, prosthetic socket like uh... If this is only about the shoulder part right and if there is a prosthetic been required uh, in the elbow area or below the elbow area do we say use the same strap system or no as i said uh, as we go the lower level of amputation the strapping get reduced uh, higher the level of amputation more the strapping is required to stabilize and to get the function and low the level of the amputation the less straps are required to uh, stabilize and the get function from the prosthesis what more do we have to discuss now uh, we'll uh, talk about the above elbow uh, prosthesis and the casting procedure of uh, above elbow prosthesis we just we cover with the stocking at the residual part of the uh, body and then use a plaster of paris bandage to take negative cast of the 
that portion and then trim lines uh, i mean the trim lines are important uh, uh, for the function of the prosthesis if the trim lines are low the more mobility patient get from the prosthesis and the trim lines i mean the edges uh, or the portion where we cut the upper edges where we cut the socket from is uh, higher than the patient get less uh, movement from the prosthesis so these trim lines are very necessary part of the prosthetic these these are very because that limits the movement of the particular joint and the pro, uh, the prosthesis okay. measurements is important to match the socket uh, with the residual part of the uh, body and we take uh, measurement 1 inch pro, uh, interval from the uh, uppermost uh, area of the stump so where, where does this in uh, start from the measurement where is it taken from we decide the certain landmarks on the body like uh, in case of below elbow we see the bony prominence and then mark the prominence and then from that bony prominence we measure uh, on the interval of uh, 1 inch or uh, 2 cm whatever uh, the scale person is using and then we take a negative cast so after ne taking negative cast we fill it with the plaster measure uh, match the measure measurements which we have taken and then make a socket for uh, patient and it is important we take uh, anterior posterior measurement the width of anterior posterior and then circumference of uh, the residual limb in case this uh, what are these tubes these are used for the uh, measurement purpose that is yeah it is being used for a measurement purpose measurement of the shoulder width of the shoulder joint we are using that tube that is caliper which we call casting is a big part of the prosthetic prosthetic fitment the casting is very important big part of uh, prosthetic fitment because the, if the socket does not fit so the patient cannot use the prosthesis and for making good socket good cast and the nice modification in the cast is required so we'll discuss about the casting in casting good impression of axilla is required and the good medial lateral wrap we wrap the plaster of paris uh, on a arm or residual limb then uh, start your circumferential wrap we wrap entire entire stump or entire residual of the body and enclose the whole of the residual uh, limb plus the anterior posterior wings then we give pressure on this uh, anterior and posterior of the shoulder to make it as close as possible to the uh, patient's body so that it controls the rotation of the processes medial or lateral rotation of the processes otherwise if there is a gap or if the anterior posture of the uh, socket is loose then it will allow certain rotation uh, at the time of uh, prost prosthetic use so that makes patient very uncomfortable and the control of the processes is lost in that case what is this casting made up of what what is the cast cast we use a plaster of paris normal plaster of paris bandage and we just wrap on the residual part of the patient's body and after in few minutes uh, the plaster of paris bandage get uh, set it becomes hard and after it when it become hard we take it out and uh, fill it with the plaster of paris and get a positive cast so what are the common ca uh, cast faults that we can see in daily life oh uh, taking cast in abduction and then uh, over adducted an uh, elevated shoulder in humeral flexion these are the flaw in case of the patient uh, person is taking class cast in abducted position then when the prosthesis is align, aligned the uh, pro professional can see the gap uh, over the shoulder and if it is over adducted it uh, professional can see when the socket is in the professional will find the gap at the area of axilla in flexion and extension the same uh, the uh, socket will be loose from the anterior or posterior side so these are to be very taken much care of while making a cast and while applying it in the prosthetic exactly when we uh, take a cast we uh, draw a trim line from uh, which uh, part we are going to trim the socket and according to the, that uh, trim line marking comes uh, uh, transfer on the cast and then we uh, at the time of modification according to the marking we modify the cast and make the socket for the prosthesis 
So what does this figure tell us? This figure uh, here it, it shows the trim line of a socket. Like uh, this is the shoulder part of the uh, amputee, and uh, this is above elbow case. And in that, uh, this is a sock dynamic socket design. So trim line is kept uh, below the shoulder, and uh, it is covering anterior and posterior part of the uh, uh, shoulder. So it prevents the rotation, but uh, allows the maximum abduction of the uh, uh, shoulder joint. You can see the patient uh, during the trial phase, uh, professional is adjusting the straps of the prosthesis and uh, training the patient for the uh, use of the prosthesis. When cast is setting, check you, uh, you are well into the axilla because ax uh, it is important to have contact at axilla point. It gives a good pr proprioception uh, to the patient. Hold the anterior and posterior wing. Uh, tight into the good position so that uh, it uh, prevents the rotation of the socket and good fit uh, in the delta pectoral groove that is the anterior, that is the at anterior part of the shoulder so uh, it controls and give good control for the use of the prosthesis now in this uh, so you can see the cast uh, casting of a uh, elbow patient the shoulder i mean the upper uh, arm is wrapped with the plaster of paris and the shoulder is covered with the plaster so we are getting a good impression uh, of uh, his uh, shoulder and arm so du just duplicate of his uh, uh, amputated side we modify uh, for a pressure uh, tolerant and sensitive area and then make the socket after taking a cast we fill it with the plaster of paris we just uh, make some uh, 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 brim stronger of the that processes we draw the trim uh, trim lines inside the socket and we position uh, align a uh, little bit alignment of the socket we do at the time of after taking the cast and then we fill it uh, uh, with the plaster of paris to get a positive mold the, it is uh, the position of the cast is maintained while uh, uh, pouring the plaster of paris so that uh, at the time of fabrication it does not uh, create uh, any uh, trouble to the for fabrication we will discuss uh, about the uh, above elbow body powered prosthesis so what does this term body powered mean body powered is uh, patient is using his own body power to operate the prosthesis like i told certain movements which patient make to use the prosthesis uh, because of that to uh, use of a body uh, use of body movement and power of his own body it is called body powered prosthesis because there is no internal power, power in the prosthesis which can be used for the function. So, uh, before going on to the break, I would just like to summarize that we were discussing about the shoulder prosthetics, how there are different types of shoulder prosthetics, some are simple, some are complex and how they, their cost also vary according to them and their casting, how they are being made and how the it is made so as to look so very similar to the other limb. We will continue our discussion for the uh, below elbow prosthetics after a short break. The state of knowledge exists. The will, the capacity, and method are usually the problem. Mansik Mandata ek aisi viklangta hai, jo 18 vars ki ayu se purv kabhi bhi ho sakti hai. Jisme vyavhar anukulta mein kami, evam buddhi kshamta 70 pratishat se kam hoti hai. Alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. 
भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद द्वारा देश भर में पंजीकृत केंद्र इस बात को प्रमाणित करते हैं एन प्रादेशिक केंद्र नई दिल्ली एक ऐसा ही केंद्र है जहां छात्रों को प्रशिक्षण दिया जाता है जिसके उपरांत वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों की सेवा में नियुक्त होते हैं क्लासरूम टीचिंग ग्रुप टीचिंग एवं भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद के नव शिखर चैनल पर प्रसारित टेली कॉन्फ्रेंसिस द्वारा संबंधित विषयों पर विस्तार पूर्वक ज्ञान दिया जाता है मेडिकल ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपी फिजियोथेरेपी स्पीच थेरेपी साइकोलॉजी और स्पेशल एजुकेशन जैसे क्षेत्रों में छात्रों को प्रशिक्षित किया जाता है प्रयोगात्मक अनुभव एवं अभ्यास के लिए टीचर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के उपरांत छात्रों को मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के साथ कक्षाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है और इंडिविजुअलाइज्ड एजुकेशन प्लान का भी आधार बनाया जाता है जिससे वे संपूर्ण शिक्षा एवं चिकित्सा शैली को समझ सकें। इस पूरी प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम के दौरान विद्यार्थी जर्नल्स न्यूज़लेटर्स, पेरियोडिकल्स चार्ट्स, मॉडल्स कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग एवं टेक्स्ट बुक्स का उपयोग कर सकते हैं कहते हैं कीप योर फेस टू द सनशाइन एंड यू कैन नॉट सी द शेडो इसी बात को ध्यान में रखते हुए विद्यार्थियों को सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है जहां वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के लिए निरीक्षण प्रशिक्षण एवं अनुसंधान का दायित्व संभालते हैं और इसके पश्चात ये विद्यार्थी इस प्रशिक्षण का उपयोग मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के सामाजिक एवं शैक्षणिक उत्थान एवं विकास में करते हैं और एक लक्ष्य की ओर आगे बढ़ते हैं और फिर लक्ष्य कितना ही दूर हो फासला नजरों का धोखा भी तो हो सकता है वो मिले या ना मिले हाथ बढ़ाकर देखो हम होंगे काम में हा हम होंगे काम में हा हम होंगे काम में आ एक दिन ओ मन में है विश्वास पूरा है विश्वास हम होंगे काम में आ एक दिन विशाल ओवर काम विशाल ओवर काम विशाल ओवर काम संधि ओ दिन दिन महार आई डू बिलीव दैट वी शैल ओवरकम समधि वी शैल ओवरकम समधि वी शैल ओवरकम समधि वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक Before going on to the break, we were discussing about the different shoulder prosthetics. Now we continue our discussion with the above elbow prosthetics. So, to what is the above elbow prosthetics? For above elbow prosthetics, we need to consider certain points uh, which are 
from the uh, patient side like what he can control what can be controlled how is power generated and the level of loss whether the patient is congenital case or the whether he is a traumatic the special consideration in socket design for uh, for that particular patient and the the, the age of the uh, patient and the function uh, function in education social and reaction like a function uh, how the educational status or iq level of the patient and then the uh, social uh, activities of the patient in that uh, like what we uh, what can be body power so body power uh, elbow we can use body power to control the elbow joint and uh, hand we can use uh, with body power and uh, shoulder which is very difficult to use with the body power processes like in hand for adults uh, they can use the hand with the, the body power but it is very difficult for a ch child amputee children they do not use the body power because it's a tricky movement and it takes the patient get the pressure from the strap it is difficult to use the body part in a child case grippers grippers require more uh, force to op operate than the normal cosmo functional hand so if we are going to prescribe a gripper gripper is a uh, uh, is a device which uh, allows to do hard work or the job requires the heavy uh, force and the hand for children it is uh, uh, it is very simple and uh, controlled very easily because the forces in the hand is very low with compared to the uh, adult hand and the elbow joint the flexion and extension of the elbow joint what are the advantage of body power hand gripper and passive functions control dependent on effect and feedback like uh, hand patient can use hand or gripper with the body power but the function is dependent from the visual feedback like uh, uh, in prosthesis patient does not have a sensation the prosthesis does, does not have a sensation like normal hand so the patient need to do a coordinated sequential movement to, to operate the prosthesis and at the same time the visual feedback is required whether the his what movement he is doing is correct to uh, get do the task or whatever the function he is doing and according to uh, from that feedback he the whatever changes in the movement or the function required that patient uh, does but uh, the prosthesis lightweight and quick response so as the patient moves their body to operate the prosthesis uh, it responds immediately uh, but more it requires more effort to operate the prosthesis and the sequential movements are uh, important because for a particular uh, movement like for uh, opening a hand this movement of a shoulder movement of a elbow is required and a limited range of motion can uh, disturb or can limit the function of the prosthesis providing the power bascapillar abduction is important to open the terminal device on the or the prosthetic hand and uh, different uh, differential body motions like motion at shoulder joint motion at uh, motion at uh, uh, scapula and uh, motion at elbow joint is important to get the function from the prosthesis and operation from a waist belt so in certain cases uh, waist belt is required where the suspension is not possible from the upper limb so in that case uh, tolerance pressure tolerance at the waist is uh, also uh, important then this diagram uh, Uh, the diagram shows the, how the muscle muscle work to get a particular function at the uh, time of muscle contraction when muscle contracts uh, it cools the uh, lower po portion of the joint to get the function like uh, if the bicep muscle is contracting it is pulling from the uh, below just below the elbow joint to flex the elbow joint the same uh, function is used in a prosthetics of, uh, also so when uh, for that patient need to move his uh, uh, shoulder joint he need to flex his shoulder joint so that the straps coming uh, uh, in between the arm and the body it pulls the uh, elbow joint uh, the arm up to get the flexion of the processes socket design uh, socket design is important uh, because uh, we need to see in socket design uh, uh, whether the vertical loading patient can tolerate and the pressures uh, created by the socket or the processes can be tolerated uh, by the patient 
like uh, in uh, above elbow prosthesis when prosthesis is loaded in elbow flex position uh, the, it gives the pressure at anterior uh, distal end like that is a, a front lower end of the residual part and the posterior uh, po uh, means back upper portion of the shoulder joint so a patient should be able to tolerate and uh, should get used to that type of pressure when using a functional prosthesis so like if uh, there are Livers also in our body. If we talk about the physics part, if we talk about there are livers like the fulcrum, the load is there. So, are these livers also keep in mind, kept in mind while making the prosthetic? Yes, it is important while making a prosthesis because if the stump is short, in the residual part is short, the patient will require more force to operate the prosthesis. And as a, similar to as you said in the physics, if the liver arm is short in that case, but if the stump is longer. So, patient require less effort to operate the processes because of the longer liver arm. In vertical loading, when patient in a normal standing position is for holding some object, so it creates some vertical pressure at the uh, at uh, uh, axilla and uh, uh, shoulder uppermost part of the shoulder joint. And when he is compressing something or pressing something down the just opposite uh, at the distal end of the uh, stump and the axilla he get the reaction from the prosthesis and force from the prosthesis so that also we need to keep in mind while designing a socket for a above elbow prosthesis so this is a photograph of a externally powered above elbow prosthesis in this we can see the various straps which control the prosthesis like this straps from this strap from a back side this controls the opening of the hand as well as the flexion of the elbow joint. This moves the flex, uh, elbow and open and close the hand. And the other straps, these keep the prosthesis in a position. Suspension, uh, uh, source of power and motion, forces and distance multipliers. Like uh, as you said, if uh, positioning of a particular, uh, the hinges is very important like uh, in this case, if the positioning of particular stay or hanger is important, like uh, in this case, if the hanger is not positioned properly, the effort generated by the uh, patient's body get wasted and get absorbed, and the expected outcome does not uh, uh, achieve. More of power is utilized and less of output is required. Output obtained. is gain obtained. Exactly. So what else? The position and operation of the prosthesis in three dimension. The range of joint motion is important to see with the prosthesis how much range he is uh, achieving and uh, range of motion restricted by socket design. Uh, the socket design should be such that it should provide maximum uh, range of motion of the particular joint, the covering joint. Like in above elbow, the socket design should provide maximum, uh, maximum mo motion of the shoulder joint. So, the dynamic socket which is trimmed below the shoulder gives more abduction whereas the conventional socket which cover the shoulder joint does not allow because that the brim, the edge of the uh, socket uh, restrict the abduction movement. So, similarly, uh, we need to consider various type of uh, uh, socket uh, design for the processes. And in case of uh, these like range of motion if we talk about the socket they help or they can also help us in maintaining the structure of the body part of the upper limb also socket is we does socket does not change according to the structure of body but we make socket according to the structure so it is important because if there is change in the body so we need to change the socket if suppose child is growing and the socket is becoming tied over the period of time so we change the socket for a periodically for the child but if suppose a healthy person is getting fit to be the prosthesis and after some time he lose his weight so socket will become uh, loose so in that case also we need to do some alteration in the socket or change the socket for optimum fit these cable driven hands what are they in the, in the case uh, cable driven hands are two types one is a voluntary opening and the second one is a voluntary closing type it comes in a ch child and adult size. Voluntary opening is uh, hand is uh, remains in closed position always, and the body part is used to open the hand, and the voluntary closing hand remains open normally. So body part is used to close the hand uh, and to pick the object or do the task. 
but using your body power uh, or voluntary closing hand is difficult because uh, to fix uh, certain thing patient uh, the amputee has to apply force uh, according to the object and it is very difficult to uh, apply force on a particular thing with the harness for holding a thing compliant we need to see how i mean in a training we need to see various type of uh, points like the compliance the how the object is how the geometry or structure of the object and uh, uh, how the patient is able to operate the system so uh, when using a prosthesis if suppose a triangular object it is difficult to hold from the top because the, it will slip down uh, from the prosthesis yes, so we need to train how to position the object and then pick it from the uh, its position so these are photo uh, photographs of uh, just to show how it looks like these are externally powered uh, voluntary opening type of hand so the, the cable in this hand is pulled to open the hand and the spring coil spring inside closes the hand to do the task the same is uh, the same comes in child size the internal structure we can see the coil spring which uh, which is uh, pre tensed so the hand remains in closing position and when we open the hand it is tensed tensed further and close the hand when the cable is released so these are various type of uh, uh, assistive devices or terminal devices uh, for the upper limb prosthesis the, the, the these are the upper left these are the functional terminal devices these are mostly used for the common uh, work or the for patient require uh, heavy duty or uh, hard work and the similarly for different various purposes various type of uh, hands are available and terminal devices can be used like a plier gripper clamp or hook uh, which can be used according to the person's requirement you can see the photo in a photograph so various tasks being done by the amputee using upper limb prosthesis they can drive they can do all normal job after treatment they can fly uh, plane drive a car or play uh, child's play case elbow uh, cable operated elbow it is important to see the range of uh, flexion uh, in the elbow joint and then elbow unit with their it is a exoskeletal or endoskeletal and a lock of the elbow joint Whether it is internal locking or external locking. So considering this point and the function, uh, functional functional ability of the patient, we uh, select the component for the above elbow patient. Again, the hybrid system. It is a combination of both mechanical and the electric system. So the elbow is mechanical and the system is uh, hand is uh, myoelectric. So with a strap, he can use the hand, and with passively, he can adjust the elbow joint. Uh, this is the structure of uh, elbow joint the outer for exoskeletal uh, elbow joint it, it is a more or less uh, normal human uh, limb uh, shape and uh, after at the end of that uh, the terminal device hand is fixed and the uh, cable control is attached at the level of elbow joint and the op functionally obtained from the prosthesis in case of uh, elbow disarticulation where the length is uh, important because in elbow disarticulation the level of uh, residual limb is the same as the level of uh, elbow of normal side so when we fit a prosthesis it is difficult to fit a joint below the elbow because that will increase the length of uh, upper arm more it will become the upper arm length will become more than the normal side and it looks very awkward and the patient acceptance is very low for that so in that case we uh, uh, use external joints so we make a socket fix a external joints so that maintain the length of the elbow joint at the same of the normal side these are photo photographs of uh, a above elbow patient in this patient has a uh, invagination and scar at the uh, anterior part of his sternum so according uh, considering the uh, scar and wound we uh, it is important to make changes in the socket so you can see in this socket uh, the opening is made a hollow is made so that the, that portion the sensitive portion does not get pressure uh, at the time of function of the prosthesis So again, I uh, explained uh, this is a chain of uh, using a prosthesis. A uh, uh, human uh, prosthesis user uses uh, the prosthesis give commands to the prosthesis. Prosthesis then does the function or outcome position, and then that function or that movement is observed by the uh, uh, prosthetist. Uh, sorry, the patient, 
and again he adjusts the processes accordingly and uh, does the proper function of the processes. So, the the so cable prosthetics. This work. is for the cable processes or any type of uh, uh, upper extremity processes. The same is for other cases of the prosthetics also or just for the upper limb? These are this, like is, this is same for the all type of processes because uh, the processes does not have sensation. So, it is important at the time of performing any task, it is important to see how the hand is functioning. With normal hand, you can just palpate, feel it and do the work, but in prosthesis, there is no sensation. So, we need to, patient need to see how, what is, uh, the hand is doing and how he has to operate the hand for the particular function. So, it acts as a normal hand? It acts almost as a normal almost. hand, but the prosthetic hand has uh, only two functions, opening and closing, that is very, uh, basic function of the normal hand. Okay. In this we can see the harnessing of a below elbow prosthesis. As, as I told the as the low, uh, level of amputation comes low, the harnessing reduces. So in the conventional type, old type of socket design, the cross type of or uh, figure of 8 harness is used and the new socket design Y type, this is now called Y type of uh, harness. The only one step for opening and closing and of the hand is used. And these are a uh, few uh, devices made for the partial hand amputee. Like a patient has a thumb but uh, has lost all the digits. So, uh, prosthetists design a pro assistive device according to the uh, requirement and then patient can do the gripping of uh, with his hand or uh, picking up object with the type of assistive devices. These are like, they help completely and a person can become independent to a certain limit. After, after treatment of a prosthesis, person can do all, most of the activity of daily living and perform all the tasks he was performing before uh, with the normal hand, before the amputation. Okay. So, for today, our topic was upper limb prosthetics. And in that, we discussed the different movements that are present at the upper limb. Then we discussed about the different types of amputation present in the upper limb, that is the below shoulder, above elbow, below elbow. Then we discussed about the different assessment procedure that needs to be mentioned, the points that need to be taken care of while assessing a patient with amputation. And we had different types of prosthetics that are the endoskeleton, exoskeleton and under these also we have different uh, prosthetics made for different purposes like some are for functional purpose, some are for cosmetic purpose like to develop a person's personality and to uh, make him adjust more into the society and some of them provide the both purposes such as the functional as well as the cosmetic purpose. Then in detail we discussed about the shoulder prosthetics or the four quarter uh, prosthetic where we discussed about how it is made, how the casting is done and how they are attached and how a person is trained to use them. Then we discussed about the elbow prosthetic, above elbow prosthetic, how they are casted, how they are made and how the impression of a person's other elbow is taken so as to make it look like the normal or as it was before. And at the end we understood how it is important uh, for a person to adjust socially and with the help of these prosthetic, it makes it more easier for the person to perform his occupation and carry out his uh, acti acti activities of daily living. I'd like to thank Sir for thank taking out your precious time and sharing the knowledge. With that, we come to the end of our today's discussion. I hope you like the show. Thank you for watching us.